The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to the third season of The Ben Heck Show. We've made some changes, so before we get started, I wanted to let you know what to expect. First, thanks to your feedback, we're now bringing you new episodes every week. You asked for it and now you've got it. We also thought it would be fun to share some of the things we haven't always had time for, like the projects I'm working on outside the show, new gadgets and tools I've picked up, as well as pinball updates. You'll get all this and more in our Ben News segment. You've also asked for more tutorials as well as tips and tricks, so we're going to be sharing those along with the mods you've already come to expect on the show. Sometimes we'll have a rant and rave segment where I share my thoughts on electronics, gaming, modding, and all things geeky. I'll also be taking some time to answer your questions. You can ask me anything. Thanks for coming back. Let's get started. And now it's time for the news. So in Ben news, I recently bought a MakerBot replicator. This is the original replicator. It has the two heads so you can select what color plastic you want to use and also make dual color parts. I like it quite a bit. We made a lot of parts for the Xbox 360 laptop with it, including this DVD door and these custom hinges and a fan mount. The thing that's handy about it is you basically just load a file in Replicator G and click print. Everything's calibrated so you basically know it'll work. You can click and print. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoy this purchase and I'm sure you'll be seeing more of this and the parts that it makes in the rest of season three. And there you are. You know, this reminds me. One of our viewers sent in an idea saying that we should make a device which prevents teens from texting while driving, or at least catches them in the act. What do you think? Here's my plan for the anti-texting device. Here's a teenager's phone. You have to put the phone into the dock in the car before you even turn on the car. The current sensor will sense whether or not the phone is being charged, i.e. whether the phone is in the dock. A microcontroller unit will both sound an alarm if the phone isn't in the dock, and also uses real-time clock to log whether or not you're complying with it to an SD card which your parents can look at afterwards. The first part of this project, we're going to build the physical enclosure for the phone itself that can attach in the car. So let's get started by making the case and enclosure. Now I'm routing out the case using my ShopBot CNC router. Here are the two halves that we routed out on the ShopBot. There's a back, which is gonna have our mounting screw holes. As you can see, I countersunk them. And a front. And they go together to hold the phone. Now, it's not gonna show much of the screen. We're gonna kind of consider this a phone chastity belt. Yes, I just said that. So even though the phone is on your dashboard, we don't want it to be very usable. You can still pull it out but you can't really text on it because that's the idea, right? So we've got a, a micro USB adapter, just the adapter itself. I got that from Element 14. And we're gonna squeeze the phone in here, squeeze the adapter in place. See how there's a little countersink for it on both sides? Then capture the phone like this. And once we know that it's in place, there. Now as you can see, the uh, adapter stayed in the case. So when we plug the phone back in, It'll click into the adapter. Oh, I can't text. Oh, blah, blah. but that's the thought. Then when they're done and safely parked with the engine off. OMG, they had these sales at the mall today. I can't believe it. Justin Bieber. Finding a suitable dance partner. Hmm, not so easy. Finding a community where 100,000 engineers, the latest innovations, information, answers, experts, and design solutions come together. Much easier. Discover how we're listening to your feedback 
and building a better experience. All right, so I used this um, motherboard I had laying around to test out the micro USB slot just to make sure the polarity was correct. Uh, you had to make sure that you know you don't get ground and power backwards, otherwise you can ruin your stuff. So I have the ground line here, okay? That's definitely ground, because I'm on a shield. And I have positive five volts here. Let's see if we can get that through. Titanic, sinking, send ships, romantic comedy on board. So now we can test this on the phone and hopefully we won't blow up the phone. Then we can seal up that part of the case and we'll move on to the next part, which are the electronics. I'm going to screw this together. It's tempting to glue it together, but never build anything you can't take apart. That's rule number one, and two, and five. All right, I got the case finished up. Here's the part where your phone goes. Power for the phone. Back here, we have a custom 3D printed enclosure that will hold the electronics that we're going to build in the next step. And here's a really loud buzzer that will annoy the kids until they put their phone in. And in the second part of the project, next week, we'll be making the electronics that will make everything work and then we'll demonstrate its use. A surplus of parts is something to rave about. Over the years, I've accumulated a lot of spare parts. I got into the habit of ordering extras for my projects because in the beginning, I made more mistakes and ruined more parts. Now I still get extras, but often I don't need them. This is nice when you are feeling inspired and want to jump right into a project. I don't have to wait around for the parts to come in the mail. I can also rant about this though, because on the other hand, you get to the point where you have so many parts, you can't find anything. I half expect to find myself on that Hoarders TV show. My name is Allison Harriet. I'm a psychologist specializing in hoarding. <sighs> Let's get back to the show. Today's viewer question comes from David who asks, what can I do with my old laptop LCD screen? Well, the short answer is nothing. Just give it away or recycle it. The difficulty and cost of making that screen work in anything other than the laptop it came with far exceeds the value of just going out and buying one from Tiger Direct or Best Buy, so standalone monitor. And they're getting really thin now too. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to finish up the electronics for the teen texting device and then install it in the car. We'll see you then.